Welcome back to the Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show. And today we're taking a call from a 20 year old in college who's making over like 50 something thousand dollars a year reselling luxury Canada Goose jackets, buying them in the summer at low prices and then flipping them in the winter for over like 50% profit margins. It's pretty crazy. So he wants to know if he should stay with the business, focus on school, drop out of school, focus on the business. So many questions, so many answers. Let's bring him on and see what's going on. So, Nathaniel, welcome to the Graham Stephan Show. What's going on? Hey, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Um, just a bit about me. I'm, I'm 20 years old. I'm moving up in Vancouver, BC. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, right now, I'm in kind of like community college, like transfer school, um, trying to pursue accounting. Um, and for the last couple of years, I've kind of just been reselling, like, used luxury coats as a kind of side hustle. Uh, and I guess one thing that I kind of wanted to call in about was, as I approach like the last couple of years of school, I've, I've kind of just been feeling a little bit more distracted from classes. Um, and just in general, kind of feeling like I'm turning down uh, potential opportunities to grow outside of like just the, the school grind. And I'm really not sure if I should treat my, my side hustle as like distraction or if I should kind of pursue it more and, and kind of, uh, yeah, maybe even just go like part time at school or something like that. But yeah. So wait, so what is the business? It's, it's your reselling, you said coats? Yeah, so like specifically like luxury coats. Like I don't know if you've heard of the brand like Canada Goose or of like course, Montclair. That, yeah, Canada Goose is the yeah. only one that I that I remember when I was when I was in Canada. You see, you go to like Western, you see like everyone wearing Canada Goose. It's like oh, I have a Canada yeah. Goose, and, and I'm shocked at the prices, like six, seven, yeah. eight hundred bucks for one of these jackets. I'm like, yeah. why? You know, they're comfortable. I get it, they're comfortable, but why? Like just a few blankets would do the same thing. Just walk around wearing a comforter for like fifty bucks. So anyway, so so how do you resell these? What how does this work? Yeah, I, I kind of just keep an eye out. Like it, it started a few years ago when I would like I found uh, I found like one on Craigslist for really cheap. It was like an older model from like the early two thousand. And it I ended up wearing it for a little while, and then I ended up I think making like you know two or three hundred bucks on it after I wore it. And I was kind of like, oh, like you know maybe I can look into this more. So basically, what I do, I kind of just like really keep my eye on places like Craigslist or, or Facebook marketplace through the off season. Cause obviously it's mm. like super seasonal. Um, so then I just, I kind of just buy them in the spring and summer when people are trying to get rid of them. And then I just like offload them in the winter. Um, and so like right now I'm on track, like for this year to make around like 55 to 60 grand revenue. Okay. But because of like how selective I am with purchasing, like my profit margin is like over 50%. So um, hopefully looking to profit around like 30 grand this year. Okay. And I mean, I'm also in school and I'm maybe putting in like an average of like 45 minutes a day, uh, mostly just kind of talking to people. Um, I get a lot of stuff shipped to me and that kind of thing. So I'm not really putting in a lot of time. Yeah. And so it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of been a side thing. And, and for the amount of time I put in, I feel like it's uh, pretty good. That's a really good return. So that's about a hundred bucks an hour. Let's just say 45 yeah, minutes like a day that. for your time, you're making 30 something grand a year. That's about a hundred an hour. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of what I mean is like, I'm super because of that and because of kind of how easy the, the, the money feels is kind of like, I feel like I want to, you know, invest more in it, put in more time and see if I can, you know, grow it. And I do think it's, it's relatively scalable, especially with, you know, like a 50% margin. It's kind of crazy. How scalable um, is it realistically? Because you're really going off of one brand. There's only so much you could do. At a certain point, you're going to need someone else to step in. And then when you get that other person to step in, what's to stop them from going and basically, well, now I know how to do this. I'm just going to do this on my own. Why do I need to share the profits with you? Because I feel like this is a business that's really run on you. Yeah. No, I think it's true. I think like if I, if I really – if I treated it more like a full-time job, you know, I think that I could – I could work. I, I think like realistically, I think I could probably scale it up to like 150 K revenue a year. Um, somewhere around there, maybe like a hundred, 150 K. Mm-hmm. Um, cause like I said, I'm not putting in too much time. And, and I think that like, um, it's, it's just like kind of such like a random niche, uh, especially like here locally, I've kind of got uh, good channels, like local Facebook groups and stuff like that, that I sell in. Um, so I, yeah, I think I could, I could scale it up to like a hundred, 150 K a year, but, um, yeah, I, I, besides that, even, I do feel like I'm kind of just opportunities around me in general, um, kind of getting into some short-term rental stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I, my concern is that if I focus more on these kind of side things, I'm sacrificing, you know, my grades, not getting into the right internships, stuff like that. 
Um, yeah. My biggest concern with this is that you know, Canada Goose might be a trendy sort of thing now. I know it's been around for a yeah, very totally. long time, but it seems like really within the last five years or so, it's become like the thing to have now. Yeah. Um, I'm worried that maybe five years from now, it might not be the thing and there might be something else that props up in this place. Here's the thing. I always think there's going to be a market for, sure. for luxury jackets. I think that's it's always going to be a thing. Um, so it's I think it's always going to be something, whether or not it's that or something else. But just that trend, I you know, I yeah. don't know. I just don't know how sustainable a business like this would be long term. I think it's an amazing side hustle. And I think you doing this while in school is perfect. And yeah. it, this is like the best opportunity you're gonna have. But I also I just worried long term sustainability. Like how long for do sure. you do this for and how long is this sustainable for? So you know, yeah. I would I would probably continue doing what you're doing. Spending an hour a day is not the end of the world. You can make time for an hour a day plus yeah. school, you know. For an extra hundred bucks a day, that, that if you're saving that money too, that's going to put you so far ahead. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I'm still living at home, so like, pretty much everything I make, I'm saving up. Um, so yeah, I've, like, I've got basically no overhead or anything like that. That's you know, kind of keeping me, yeah, keeping my savings down or anything like that. But yeah, I would do that. And and so so basically, so my understanding is, you you, you get these in the summer and you sell them in the winter. Is that the strategy? Yeah, pretty doing much. This? Yeah, and it's it's not only that, like, it's just <clears throat> kind of like knowing, you know, what sizes, what colors, all that kind of stuff is going to sell. And then also just because I'm, like, buying over such a long period of time in the off season, I kind of can be, like, really selective. Um, like, just, like, this week, I've probably sold a few coats that, you know, I bought in the spring for, you know, 250 and I'm selling them for, like, 750 850 Wow. Um, yeah. Do you ever get fakes? Uh, I've, I've had a few people scam me. Uh, I haven't actually got a fake. I've had, just had people that have like ghosted me after, after, you know, saying they're going to ship it or, you know, trying to work out a shipping deal with somebody that's kind of sketchy. Um, but thankfully I, I haven't had fakes and thankfully it's not like shoes where the fakes are like one-to-one. -one. Um, but yeah, that's something that I've had, thankfully. Jeez. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, it sounds like a great business. I wouldn't give it up. I, I, would, I would spend the same amount of time as you are, maybe I'll spend a little bit more time if it means you make a little bit more money. Keep this up with school. Okay. I, I think in your situation, I'd, I'd want to graduate from school too, just so you have that. Yeah. If this were any other business that I think you could like really grow and turn into something massive in the future, then I would say you know, drop out, make, make the money. But this relies so heavily on, on trend. And and also, with global warming, one of these days, jackets are going to be obsolete because we're going to be so hot. Canada, is in the winter, is going to be like 85 degrees. So, <laughs> you guys in Canada, you don't need them. Yeah, no, exactly. So and, and, and then you can't sell them. So I'm kidding. But, <laughs> you know. um, I did just have another kind of question, a little bit on another tangent, if you're, yes. uh, if you're down. Yes. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so just look kind of, I just mentioned a little bit before, but my parents, like, we're just kind of in the process of selling our house that we had, um, we had it rented out as like an investment property. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're looking to buy like an apartment or two apartments in the downtown Vancouver area for, for short-term rentals specifically. Yeah. And I know that you've, I think you've spoken a little bit about it in the past. Uh, and I think that if I remember correctly, your biggest concern was kind of, you know, the government could put in one regulation and your whole business model goes down the drain. Correct. And I just kind of wondered if you had any input, um, you know, not for me here in Vancouver, but for people that are maybe in cities that have kind of uh, put in regulations and have kind of uh, like started to adjust to that, to that whole like Airbnb uh, kind of thing. And like, do you think it's, well, yeah, I guess just your opinion on short-term rental stuff where, um, you know, the chance of new regulation is pretty low. Um, I think the chance of new regulation is pretty high. It seems like okay. a lot of the popular tourist destinations are getting hit in some way or another. I know um, Lake Tahoe was one of those areas where um, they hmm. were really heavily restricting vacation rentals there. Los Angeles now, you can only rent out the property. I think it's 120 days a year on Airbnb. Anything beyond that needs a permit. Um, I've, I've seen several people uh, reach out to me afterwards thinking about mm -hmm. selling their home because they can no longer get the rental income that they used to get renting it on Airbnb. And it just seems yeah. so risky to me to rely on this entire industry that may or may not be there. I think there's always going to be a demand for long-term rentals. 
Um, For so sure. my my whole philosophy is basically if a property can cash flow on its own with a long term yep. renter, but you can end up making a lot of money doing Airbnb, then I think it makes sense. Go and do the Airbnb. That's the icing on the cake. And if anything ever happens, well, you know, so be it. You made money while you still can, but you're gonna be fine with a long term renter. The people who really got hit hard were the people who like it only cash flowed on Airbnb and they got in over yep. their heads, and then some sort of regulation caused the property not to rent anymore, and then it's like, ah, oh, property's not cash flowing, I'm out of pocket money, I bought this property, I can't sell it right now. Those are the people who got hit hard. So as long as you avoid that, yeah. I think you should be okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty much kind of what I was, I've was. i been thinking. I know that there are, yeah, I've heard horror stories about people even doing like saw bledding and, and crazy stuff that wouldn't ever cash flow in a million years uh, for long-term stuff, but yeah. Exactly. So as long as you avoid that, I think you'll you'll be fine. Sweet. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so well, much. Thanks man. so much, man. Yeah, definitely keep me posted on everything. And uh, great, great side hustle, man. You're doing a really good job. Thanks, dude. I really appreciate having me on. Cool. You got it, man. Have a good one. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, if you're not already, destroy the like button. Destroy the like button. Destroy the subscribe button. Destroy the notification bell. Go ahead and add me on Instagram. I post there pretty much daily. So if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there. We also got a Discord in the description. We got over 4,000 members right now in the Discord. You may have noticed people commenting, you know, who's here from the Discord? That better be you. You better be a part of the Discord too. So make sure to join that. And then also, if you guys want two free stocks... When you deposit $100 on Weeble, you will get two free stocks. One of those stocks is valued up to $1,000. So that's my that's my plug for the video. If you, if you, if you want to do that, two free stocks, you may as well. It's it's a good return on your money. Just put 100 bucks in there. Get it. And uh, yeah. So anyway, with that said, thank you so much for watching. And until next time.